Welcome back to the Pelineros Tele Show. Well, it's DNC week in Chicago, and Kamala Harris uh, has got a failing grade from the Washington Post for uh, the what early looks we've had of her economic policy, her price control idea. We'll see what else comes from her. But uh, behind the, the ghost at the banquet, as it were, is, is Donald Harris, her father, a rather stern, highly academic father, who, uh, according to The Economist last week, is more unashamedly Marxist than anyone in more modern politics. He's concerned with exploitation, the value form, and the diminishing rate of profit. And one issue he's concerned himself often with is whether race and capitalism are connected, uh, whether the, the, the capitalist uh, regime or system is exploitative of uh, people of color. And uh, there's a whole there's a whole topic devoted to this. Um, uh, going back to the anti-apartheid movement, there's a guy called Aaron Kudnani who's written a lot of books about that. And uh, we've got um, the, the, the racial capitalism is apparently a term, which I didn't know about until about two hours ago. It's a concept which reframes the history of capitalism as grounded in the extraction of social and econ economic value from people of marginalized racial identities, typically from black people. Well, that's one view. But another view is from our next guest, Wanjiri Najoya, who's a scholar in residence at the Mises Institute, a nonprofit organization that exists to promote the teaching and research of the Austrian School of Economics, an individual freedom, honest history, and international peace. In the tradition of that international economist, Ludwig van von Mises, in her essay, Racism, I, Ayn Rand argues that racism, which she describes as the lowest, most crudely primitive form of collectivism, is incompatible with capitalism and can only be defeated through capitalism. So this is the completely opposite theory, not that capitalism and racism go together, that capitalism is exploitative of blacks, that it's, it's actually a way to do away with racism. What do you say, Wanjiru? Um, you know, uh, that was a great uh, description you gave of uh, the argument that uh, capitalism is racist. It was a great summary of that. And some people have called it race Marxism because it's basically Marxist ideas, Marxist critiques of capitalism, but framed in the language of race. So just as they used to say to people, it exploits people based on class. And so if you're working class, you are, you shouldn't be supporting capitalism because capitalism is designed to exploit the working classes. They've taken exactly that argument and just inserted race into it. And so they're saying to black people, uh, capitalism is built on exploiting you. And uh, you, if you're black, you should oppose capitalism because it's designed to basically uh, benefit at your expense. Uh, so it's just repackaged Marxism, mm. essentially. And the reasons why uh, capitalism defeats racism are the same reasons, and this is Ayn Rand's point, the same reason why capitalism is also helpful to the working classes, to the poor, to everyone. I mean, the evidence is clear that capitalism has raised people out of poverty uh, exponentially over the decades and centuries. And the same arguments apply to disadvantaged races. If you look at disadvantaged races who've made economic progress, that's been through capitalism. So when people say, oh, but what about racism? We're concerned about racism. Often what they have in mind is not economic deprivation, but it's things like uh, what nowadays they call hate. You know, oh, well, you know, there's discrimination, there's hate, and there's this and that. We need protection, and uh, that's why we need to um, oppose the capitalists because they're the racist people. And there, the point is this: if you are engaged in free market transactions and voluntary exchange, you aren't worried what people's opinions are of you. I mean, if you go into a store to buy something, you aren't thinking. You know, I wonder whether the store owner loves me or whatever. You've got what mm -hmm. the thing you want to buy and the thing the store owner wants to sell. So you do the deal. So it's also about saying capitalism is not about the things they try to convince people that they should be concerned about. Capitalism mm -hmm. is how you fulfill your goals and how you make progress so mm -hmm. that you can focus on the things that you want to focus on, like your 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 family, your community, whatever, your hobbies, anything else that you want to focus your life on. Mm. So that's the message. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I the, the, I was talking about the Cold War and the socialist countries of Eastern Europe, and I wonder if their long history of it just 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 occurred to me. Their long history of socialism. I mean, they they're more have a bigger prejudice towards blacks, even though that their official 
ideology was brotherly love, you know. Um, and I, I guess capitalist society, I mean, what you're saying is that capitalist societies, you, you don't care the color of your money. I mean, it's the money that counts. There's there's a means of exchange and communication there. And you have a common interest. You want to sell the guy something and the other guy wants an object. And that makes race a color. I mean, which is we're. I mean, I think we're all tribal. That's the thing. We're all came out of uh, groupings that identified with people of similar appearance or similar values or whatever family or traits, and that's that's kind of genetically coded into us that we have preferences. But capitalism kind of makes that irrelevant in the sense that it individualizes us and makes us consumers and, and personal. We relate on a personal level to the to the seller. And we don't need to be tribal anymore. Um, you know, I, 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 am I making sense there? That's absolutely correct. And that's uh, one of the points I make in the article about everybody's dollar being the same color. If if yeah. all you're trying to do is buy and sell, you don't care about the skin color of uh, people that you're trying to buy and sell with. And, that, mm. and that's why I mentioned earlier the fact that capitalism allows us to uh, achieve our goals so we can focus on other things that matter to us. So let's take mm. the example of family. If somebody thinks uh, their priority in life is their family and they are tribal in the, in that sense, I think most people are tribal in their family sense. They're loyal to their brothers and sisters as opposed to strangers. That's fine because capitalism is not about bonds of family. Capitalism mm. about, is about those uh, arm's length mm. market exchanges. And on that platform, it doesn't matter what race or tribe people are. Mm. That's where mm. we interact with each other because it's for mutual benefit. Mm. And that's good. Everybody, mm. it's mm. what people call win-win. Everybody makes, mm. uh, uh, achieves their goals and then they can focus on things that matter to them. Welcome back to the Pelineros Taylor Show. Got Manjira and Joya with us, who's a scholar in residence for the Mises Institute. And we're talking about uh, capitalism as actually the solvent against uh, racism. Okay, well, if I get to give you a pushback, I, I was going to make it easy for myself. What kind of pushback do you get? But I'll make some suggestions. Let's say America is the world's most successful capitalist society identified with capitalism. And yet, you know, uh, blacks are still quite low down on the socioeconomic scale. So they'll say, yeah, yeah, you can say that. But my practical experience is, I'm down at the bottom here. And even as migrants are coming from India and China and doing well, what do you say to them? So that's been uh, one of the main uh, lines of pushback against a defense of capitalism by saying, well, look at all these poor black people. And their uh, economists like Walter Williams and Thomas Sowell have tried to explain to people that you have to think about the causes of economic inequality, what is causing it? You, you you can't just say, oh, I'm poor and that's because of capitalism. You have to ask what's causing me to be in this uh, situation. So that's one of the important uh, points they make and they point to many different causes. For example, uh, lack of education, breakdown of the family, involvement in crime. There are so many things. I mean, if you just take the example of somebody who uh, graduates, uh, in fact, graduated is not the right word, left without a high school diploma, uh, is not functionally literate, has a criminal record, has not got a stable family situation, then they're poor, then they say, oh, that's because of capitalism. No, it isn't. It's because of these things that I just mentioned, and there's something you can do to fix those. And you should get on with fixing them and not blame capitalism. People like to blame capitalism because it's easy. They mm. say it's the system. The system has caused you to be in this situation. So you don't have to worry about, you know, doing anything because there's nothing you can do. It's the system that's, you know, it's the system that's destroying you. And until they fix the system, there's nothing you can do about it. And I think that Walter Williams has really tried to explain to people it isn't the system. It's things uh, within your control. Uh, but the other thing that I wanted to mention is this idea of inequality being relative and not absolute. So when people complain, they're complaining about relative. Uh, you know, I'm poor relative to Elon Musk, and that shows that I'm downtrodden. No, it doesn't. It shows that he's a billionaire, right? And that's really, they're focusing on gaps. So this is another thing that... Um, Walter Williams did a lot of work to compare 
he says, if you take African Americans and imagine that they were a nation and compare their economic uh, achievement globally, mm -hmm. then you can see how far they've come and how much they've achieved despite what they may say or oh, whether well, we're suffering from racism they've achieved much more than many nation states he shows this he ha he actually has a really mm -hmm. great table in his book race and economics where he shows this uh, economic progress well it's interesting isn't it i think that um mississippi or is it alabama there's the poorest american state and it's the quite a lot of uh, black population well if you look at their gross domestic product per capita it's richer than the uk i mean yes so, exactly <laughs> exactly that it's all relative right yes. exactly yeah uh, but what but i mean i say but if we move the argument on from saying capitalism okay we accept capitalism but would you accept a modified capitalism let's say like with a large welfare state do 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 blacks need a an advantage, I mean, either a, a, a education system, a, a strong welfare state as you have in Scandinavia, uh, or do you think there should be a minimal uh, state and that would help blacks more with, you know, like a libertarian paradise with very low taxes and, uh, and very little of a welfare state? Yeah, good question. So two points. First, uh, we, we tried to make the point, and this was a point that uh, Ludwig von Mises often made, that there's no such thing as a modified socialism, you know, where you can say we're not really socialists, but we're just going to introduce some socialist ideas like Kamala Harris, who says we'll just have price caps and, you know, we'll just give people uh, $25,000. That'll be a down payment on their mortgage. And then they say that's not socialism. We're just helping people out. And one of the points Mises made, he has this great little book called The Middle of the Road Leads to Socialism. So that's the first point I would make. And socialism doesn't work. So if you say, well, we need these little bits of socialism because they're going to help black people, it doesn't work. That's the first point I'd make. And then the second point is, and this is, again, I will go back to Walter Williams because he's shown that black progress has not come from those kinds of, you know, affirmative action, welfare mm. payments and all these things. People say, well, we just, yes, we want capitalism, but we need a little help. And he shows that those things are not the explanation for why people have made progress. It's not because of affirmative action or civil rights or any of those things people think have uh, led to their progress. But what's more, and I think this is important, those things hurt. It's not just that they don't help, but they actually hurt. Um, there's a reason why uh, Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court of the United States, he calls affirmative action a cruel farce. He says it's cruel because actually it hurts you. DEI, I've written a lot about DEI as well, where you say DEI will help. It doesn't help, it hurts because now people say, oh, all these people are DEI hires. If, so that means they're incompetent. Right. So paradoxically, it's intended to help, but it hurts. Well, isn't this this idea? If you're if you are competent, a competent, clever black person, there's always maybe the suspicion that you're a DII hire, and yes. people you don't want to do that if you're competent because you say I, I I succeeded off my own efforts rather, and and it's rather patronising this assumption that's that it's there. Um, well, I mean, DI is an incredibly interesting topic, and it's something that I, I wish we could talk about uh, longer. So, um, is there we could check out? You said you've written about. Um, DEI, and you've written about uh, the Mises and and black uh, blackness and capitalism. Is there any way can we find it at the website of the Mises Institute? Yeah, if you go to the Mises uh, website, Mises.org, and if you mm -hmm. just uh, put my name there, it will um, it will pull up all my articles because I've written about DEI, civil rights, affirmative action, capitalism, mm -hmm. free markets, mm -hmm. and all the things that we're talking about, and and mm -hmm. all the articles there with mm -hmm. links also to Walter Williams's work on race and mm -hmm. economics that people might mm -hmm. find interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, Jira, this is a fantastic conversation. We've got to have it more more talks about this because, and I'll go I'll make sure to check out those essays actually this evening. Uh, love to have you on again, Wanjiro, because uh, this is an election that's going to be fought over some of the territory that you're talking about. Certainly, yeah. Wanjiro, enjoy a scholar in residence for the Mises Institute. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and Thank we'll you see for you. having me. Thank you. Thank Great. you.